Hey guys, welcome back to the Saints TV YouTube channel. Hope you're all having a great week so far. This video is going to be about next year. It's going to be about 2022 and it's going to be about the players that we think, that I think, that you think can really go to the next level in 2022. And by that I mean some of the youngsters that are ready to potentially take that next step and maybe some youngsters that the rest of the competition doesn't really know that much about, but we rate internally and we think that maybe they could become really important players for us as soon as next year, despite how young they are at the moment. So I've got in front of me here, I've done it recently with a bit of a screen share the last couple of videos and you guys seem to enjoy it. So in this one, I'm on Draft Guru and it's basically got every player in order of age. Um, it's got their height, their weight, their games played up until the end of 2021 and then their goals so far in their careers, and then Brownlow votes in the last column, which isn't really relevant for this video. Right at the very bottom, if we look, we've got what I think is a pretty decent core of youngsters. I know the rest of the competition, they don't really rate our youth. It's it's because they don't know it. You know, they don't talk about it. No one talks about anyone outside of Max King. But there are a lot of youngsters on that list there that I look at from pretty much from maybe high more battle and below that, that I think could turn into some really, really good players for us. But I'm here to say that what we've got right now in terms of a list is steady, in terms of youth is growing, um, and overall is um, in, in a pretty safe position. So I wouldn't be too worried about it if I was a Saints fan. Now, when I went in before and I removed um, all of the players that had retired, the Carlisles and McKernans, the Frawleys, I uh, got rid of all these players. We and Robertin also we dropped an average age by a whole year. We went from twenty five point two or something to about twenty four point one, just that, um, which took us to based on the averages of twenty twenty one, took us to being the fourth or fifth youngest overall total list, not just twenty two total list in the competition. Now, obviously, we've got Tom Campbell that's just signed, and I'll talk about that more in Saints TV Weekly, but that, to me, says that the list is not as old as people think. You need to look a bit deeper, and you'll find the real truth, and I found the real truth there. We're in that prime 23 to 25 bracket, right in the middle there in 24, and we've got a good list of players that are ready to go to the next level. So if you look here, you've got the likes of Josh Battle, Ben Patton, Jack Higgins, Hunter Clark, Nick Caulfield, Bytel, King, Sharman, Burns, Connolly, and then we haven't seen anything from Matt Allison or Max Heath, but the two of them look to be pretty exciting prospects as well and long-term prospects at that. So for me, if we're looking at players that are ready to go to the next level in this bracket, the first player that comes to mind for me is Hunter Clark. He had an, an interrupted um, 2021, we have to say. I mean, that, that collision against Adelaide was was crazy and um, that pretty much ruined his whole season. Up until that point, he had some really exciting games, but then also some really quiet games. And we kind of, we all probably think that that's probably more to do with his fitness and nothing against Clark. And obviously he's a hard worker, but to be in the midfield full-time, you need a bit of a tank. We know he's got the skill. He's silky. He, he learned to kick goals this year and he kicked some beautiful goals this year. Um, and he, he slows time down, and no one in our team does that better than Hunter Clark. So for us to go to the next level, we need to have players like Hunter Clark going to the next level, but for me, the pressure's on him. He's getting to that 60 to 75 um, game bracket now, and that's really when you want to see players start kind of coming into their own and, um, and, and making the most of their opportunities at AFL level. But for me, he's got the most talent, apart from Max King, out of this group, I think. Some of the biggest upside as well out of, out of the whole group there. The next one on the list is probably a player that was a bit hard done by, I thought, at times this year, and that's Nick Caulfield. His form wasn't quite what it was the previous year, and he was almost all Australian the previous year. That's how good he was, um, kind of being that intercept mark player in 2020 for us. But uh, Highmore came in this year, and his form was down... Um, so he was dropped, Highmore was favoured over him, but Nick Caulfield's got a lot of upside too. We know that he can do it. There's times this year where he's looked really slow, but there's also times this year where he's willing to back himself, he uses his hips, and I talk about this a lot, but that's a big strength of his, is that you can't tackle him. He, he can use his core strength around his waist and shrug players off and run. And in 2020, he was doing that every single week, and he looked fast, he looked confident, and his kicking was... You know, a good 50 meter dart and it hit the target. So 
I think he's very much a confidence player. And if we can get him and Highmore, you know, doing the best that they can every week, our backline's going to be all the better for it. He's very young, and this this group of players is really the the next core that that can take us to to hopefully flag success. Now you can't really talk about this group and not mention Max King. He's already played 38 games and he's kicked 60 goals, of which 38 of them, I think, were this year. When you look at the second half of the year and what he produced, that is one player that could win you a flag on his own, on any given day. That's how special it is to have someone like Max King in this team. So to have two of him in 12 months time, if we can, unbelievable. But for now, we've got one and one is plenty and he's gonna be a big, big problem for defenders next year. So if Max King can carry through that performance of the last 10 or so games of 2021 and basically deliver that for the entirety of 2022, we're going to win more games and he's going to kick a lot of goals. And when he runs and jumps, not only is he quicker than most defenders, they're not going to reach him at 204 centimeters. He's not going to get anyone spoiling the ball. Even Harris Andrews struggled with Max King and he's an all Australian fullback. He's one to watch next year. He's one to watch literally for the next four or five years, even his whole career. He's that special. He's that important to us. But for next year, anything less than 40 goals, I think would be a surprise for us because I'm expecting the club as a whole to be better, but I'm expecting him to, to kick straighter for the whole year and to get more opportunities. So huge year coming up for Max King in 2022. And if he has a big one, I reckon our club's in for a big one as well. Cooper Sharman's come in and played five games, and I'm really excited to see what he does. He's a really good middle ground between someone like a Tim Membry, and then you've got Max King and our resting rucks, because he's tall, he's 194, but he can get beneath his feet. He's he's great at roving the ball. He's very mobile, and he's got you know similar traits to to someone like a Tim Membry that can that can play big but can also play small, and I really like that about him. Defenders are going to take him more seriously in 2022, and um, he'll have to learn to, to cope with that as well. Now, the midfielders, these are players that um, I don't think we have many of, but I think what we've got so far is a good nucleus, and by that, I'm talking about Bytel, I'm talking about Burns, and I'm talking about Con- Connolly. What I love about these three is that they all bring something different to the team. Bytel is brute force, but he's also got tricks. He is the closest replacement to, say, Luke Dunstan, but Bytel is probably better by foot, and he's a bit quicker than Luke Dunstan, so he could fill the shoes of someone like Luke Dunstan immediately, straight off the bat round one next year, if he plays. But then you've got contrasting styles with Ryan Burns and Connolly, and Burns, he's the workhorse. He, to me, reminds me very much of a Jack Stephen, a prime Jack Stephen. He runs all day, and he's got good hands for his size. He's a very good field kick, but I think his biggest strength is his endurance. He will run all day. He played 17 games in 2021. That's great exposure to AFL football. He kicked six goals, and he was actually a very important player in a bunch of wins that we had. Every good team needs Orion Burns because they work around the ground to create a marking option to hold possession and continue the flow of the game. We don't have to bomb it long when you've got players like him running around, and hopefully with his endurance continuing to improve with his experience and his age, He's, he's going to be very hard to, to handle and keep up with when he's running all day. So that's a massive up for him. And then the other one is the the explosive one of the bunch, Leo Connolly. He takes the game on. He's explosive. He only played the seven games. But from the seven games that he played, weren't we all super impressed by him? That The debut against Richmond when he came on as the sub, the first disposal that he got was a running bounce through the middle of the MCG. And he made players look disgustingly slow like he is gonna be a very important player he may not be that absolute superstar that gets 30 disposals every week we might turn him into that we don't know but the general consensus for someone like Connolly is he could have 15 to 20 disposals a week but he's gonna get you six seven eight hundred meters gained with his running with his bouncing and his kicking and that's another thing is we've got another player that can kick he kicks on his right foot he kicks on his left foot He's going to be a very important player for us. So when you look at that nucleus of youth, you've got class, you've got speed, you've got power, you've got height, you've got mobility, and then you've got defensive structure. I mean, you can go higher up on this list and go Ben Patton, Battle, Highmore, Gresham, who missed a year last year. He, If he can get a full year next year, it's going to be massive. He could be anything as well. And you could say that with pretty much the majority of our list. But for this video, I really wanted to just restrict it to that 23 and under bracket. 
Um, because I know a lot of people have question marks and the media create that, you know, with all their news and saying we're old, we're one of the oldest teams. But I'm here, this video is here to say we're not. We're on the right track and look at this youth. Look at these players that we've got here. When you look at that list, every player there is not there filling a gap. They're not there clogging the list. They're there and they're going to improve us and get us, hopefully, to that one day in September when we can stand there and hold the cup and see players like them um, celebrating in the red, white, and black. And I can't end this video without mentioning Jack Higgins. When you look at Jack Higgins, 62 games, 56 goals already. He's going to end what he did this year, you know, uh, under adversity with that game against Sydney when he missed a lot of shots and then to bounce back and... And uh, the fact that he can lead up and take marks and, and play big and play small and go into the midfield and get a lot of the ball, again, another layer to this youth, to this young core of players that our club's got that not a lot of the AFL world even bother thinking about. They don't rate them. We're on the right track. We've got a good list. We've got good youth. And these are players that I'm most excited about to watch in 2022. You know, everyone's going to be excited to watch the likes of Steele, and Zach Jones, and these sort of players. But the players to watch for me next year are the Max Kings, the Hunter Clarks, the Nick Caulfields, the Jack Higgins, the Cooper Shamans, Burns, Connolly. These are the players that I'm really excited about, and I can't wait to see how they develop uh, in the next couple of years. But in particular, next year, when there is going to be pressure on us. We want to make finals. We need to make finals. And from you know the photos we've seen already in the offseason, these are the players that are training already. Burns, Caulfield, Connolly, Clark, King, Higgins, they're all already riding bikes every day, going to the gym, running together in groups around Brighton and whatnot, kicking the footy around on footy fields. They're already working hard, so they're setting the standard for the rest of us, so really keen to see how they go next year, but th those are my top picks for, for next year, guys. Comment your thoughts and let me know who you're most excited to to watch next year, and out of the, that that core that youth that we've got coming through who do you think is going to be the next superstar i'll leave it on that note guys a nice quick video for your friday hopefully you enjoy it i just want to do another quick shout out to thank everyone that has subscribed to the channel i put out a little call out that i want to get to 4,000 subs by round one next year and the only way for me to do that is to to get you guys that are watching that love this content that haven't subscribed to just hit that button and we'll get the job done and hit 4,000 by round one next year we're, we've already climbed, I think, about 200 in the last couple of days, which is amazing, but there's still more room to grow. So if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed and you're a Saints fan and you enjoy what I do, just hit the button and you'll get more videos coming out. I'm working bloody hard this offseason to get videos out. I'm really excited for 2022, despite you know 2021 and how that went, but really optimistic and um, hopefully you can join the, the YouTube channel and enjoy some of the videos that I'll be I'll be bringing out in the next couple of months. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I hope you're well. And as always, go you mighty saners.